It's summer in Chicago. People are out, but the beaches are closed. Flowers brighten the riverfront as some restaurants have reopened. But there is an uneasy feeling in America's third largest city. Illinois has had five straight days with more than 1,200 new cases of COVID-19. The increase gave the state its highest seven-day rolling average since the end of May. And there have been more than 7,300 deaths statewide since the pandemic began. With multiple marches and gatherings over the weekend, some restaurant workers in Chicago hit a downtown plaza protesting the need for immediate funds. It's hit it incredibly hard. Um, most of the workers I've known for years currently don't have jobs. What the reality is, is that jobs are not coming back. Restaurant workers are already a marginalized community. There's not going to be work. Across the country, restaurants have bled more revenue and jobs than any other industry. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, with nearly $120 billion in sales lost during just the first three months of the pandemic. The city is also seeing a summer of unprecedented shootings and violence. On the south side, this family has a makeshift outdoor restaurant. They're worried about the bloodshed happening nearby. The violence is always scary. You know, we want the best for our children, but you know, with all of this going on, it's hard to make it every day. You know, I, like my grandchildren, I don't let them go outside and play unless I take them out to play or my daughter take them, you know, so. This past week, 15 people were shot outside a funeral home. Police say it was gang related. But what makes this incident especially heinous is that those shooters took advantage of families and friends who were gathered to mourn the death of a young man who himself had lost his life just the week before. The ongoing battle that seemingly spreads from day to day, block to block, as we fight throughout the summer to end this carnage. We out here Sunday at 11 o'clock. We'll be out here on the parking lot. Across the street from the funeral home that was shot up is a group passing out food to those out of work from COVID-19. Well, hurt people hurt people. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it now. People are feeling wounded, and then people want to go out and hurt somebody. But at some point in time, somebody's got to stop and, and, and show some love and some compassion. And uh, so um, with all of the violence that we have around here, somebody's got to stop and think about what they're doing and think about what's going on. <laughs> Despite the violence in some areas, many took to the streets. It's time for white people to pick up the mantle. The reason that I'm sitting here in you know, a summer dress soaking my feet is to call attention to the fact that black women have been doing a lot of organizing work for progressive politics for decades and decades and centuries. Um, and it's time for white people to do that work. Um, it is far past time for black people to rest. Opinions across the city vary as much as the weather here. At another protest, nearly a thousand marched. You can see behind me hundreds of protesters walking through the city of Chicago, downtown. They just left an area that was a prison, a very tall prison, about 30 stories high. You could hear the knocks from the prisoners on the windows. They would like many of them to be freed. Now, these folks have been uh, marching for about two hours as the sun is starting to go down here in Chicago. The demands are defund the police. Uh, they would like justice for black lives. The police needs to be defunded because they get $1.7 billion a year in Chicago alone. That's 40% of our taxes. That's ridiculous. On top of that, corporations like Starbucks and Bank of America sponsor them. They have fundraisers. Is it a ridiculous amount of money that should be going to our communities? And we continue, as you can see behind me, with this large group walking through the city. Uh, police officers are on bikes and in vehicles. A defend the police rally Saturday in Grand Park had different sentiment.
For a brief moment, counter protesters against the police made their voice heard as well. That ain't right. That ain't right. So why in the world should they should be funded? Shut it down. Politics is another element of tension here. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot expressed agreement with President Trump's plan to deploy federal police to the city during a Wednesday evening phone call with him. But just days earlier, the mayor was publicly opposed to federal law enforcement assistance because, as she says, a Department of Homeland Security crackdown like in Portland was not needed in Chicago. The FBI, ATF, DEA, U.S. Marshal Service and Homeland Security will together be sending hundreds of skilled law enforcement officers to Chicago to help drive down violent crime. And murderers and violent criminals are breaking a wide range of federal laws. We have that. It's as wide as it can be. We will find them, arrest them, and prosecute them. They will be in jail for many years to come. We saw evidence of some federal law agents at protests over the weekend. They drove in unmarked vehicles following behind the Chicago police at one of the marches that snaked through downtown. With more protests scheduled, another weekend of mass shootings in Chicago's south and west side, COVID cases on the rise again, and new restrictions added, the coming weeks are uncertain for the city of big shoulders.